Hey, everybody. Adam Jackson back here for episode 12. Can't believe we made it this far. I, I'll keep saying that and then we'll eventually stop doing them. Uh, so anybody who's first tuning in, uh, my name's Adam. I'm a tech CEO, um, active investor, angel investor, LP in a bunch of funds, co-founded a hedge fund, um, actively helping build a network called Brain Trust. Uh, and I'm doing these podcasts every week, maybe every two weeks, uh, with the goal of telling stories, lessons learned, usually the hard way, trying to you know, share some knowledge and some experience from you know, being an investor and a tech CEO, uh, especially in this really difficult time, uh, for other people working in tech or investing in tech, hopefully uh, people find it useful and get a lot of good feedback that that people are. So I um, wanted to thank everybody who attended last week. We did our first live uh, episode with uh, Elena, who's our general manager of the professional network on Brain Trust, And we did it on LinkedIn Live and it was awesome. Videos up to 10,000 plus, I think, uh, and growing. Really, really fun. We'll probably do more of those. Um, so thanks for everyone who came on and attended that one. So in today's episode, we're gonna it's going to be totally different. Uh, I'm going to go through my phone and show you everything I read and watch and listen to and talk about sort of how I gather information and learn. Um, my job requires me to kind of understand where the economy is going and help steer the ship based on these things and follow obviously the deep technical stuff, crypto and AI that we that we work in every day. Uh, and a lot of people ask me about like what I'm reading or watching or whatever, and that, and I'll show some, I'll, I'll show some things that I that are not just work related but leisure, because sometimes I just hate computers and money so much that I have to watch something that it doesn't involve either of those things. So we'll we'll cover some of that too. So uh, I'll start with podcasts. Podcasts are just the number one source of information for me. Um, I use both. I use the Spotify app, which is amazing. Also, this app called Pocket Casts. It's good UI. Both those, both those are great UI. Far better than iTunes. I actually uninstalled iTunes from my phone. Um, so I'll go through kind of like what I try to listen to every day and then every week. So, so every day, like the Wall Street Journal podcast is just phenomenal. It's like 20 minutes a day. Um, the team that that does those, it, they're usually like kind of built on stuff the paper does, but so, so, so high quality, always interesting tech, business, politics, it's money and power, I think is what they talk about. And so, you know, the things people like, um, and then marketplace from NPR, these guys, so they've been around forever, Kai Rizdahl, Molly Wood. Um, what the reason I like this show so much and they run them daily is they are master storytellers on that show. And, and I, I, I popped on there a couple of times for features or whatever. Um, they are, they're such, there's like, it's like high budget, high quality, like very, very succinct way of explaining complex things. And so I learn, I more learn like how to be a better storyteller from them than I am actually learning from the content is one of my friends once said there, it's the business show for pay, people who hate business, uh, which is amazing, right? It's, it's like, if you can explain these kind of Byzantine things in a way that people, you know, regular people would care about them. You know that's really valuable. They they're the best. They do a great job. Um, moving on to things I I try to hit every week, uh, the scoop with uh, Frank Shaparo. Frank does an awesome job. He's he's a, a sleuth, uh, a really likable guy. One one of the like most um, uh, intelligent and funny kind of people in the blockchain space. Uh, I'm not just saying that because I've been on the show a couple times. He like legitimately does great work. Um, Epicenter which is probably a little known one. It's um, uh, very engineering focus. Uh, it's highly technical, but you know, almost all of my kind of deep, like or discovery of new deep technologies in the blockchain space comes from Epicenter. Uh, then of course, Laura Shin, excellent, excellent show. She's the OG. She kind of started um, content creating in this space. Shared on her feed is something called the chopping block. Uh, there's four guys, um, Tarun and uh, Hasim and uh, Tom and then Robert Leshner from Compound uh, and Robert's a good friend. 
uh, they they do, I think, w- once a week or something, like just break it. T- they go really, really deep on on the kind of news of the week and crypto. And it is real inside baseball. Those guys are are incredible. Um, I learned so much from that one. Uh, then there's On the Brink from Castle Island. So Castle Island is a venture firm. Uh, and On the Brink is, I, honestly, like I say, with no caveats, like probably this is probably the best podcast in crypto. Um, I don't, I don't know those guys that well. I went on the show a couple of years ago that it, you know, they're, I have no stake in it or anything like that. I should, I, I should be an LP in their fund. I mean, I'm sure their fund is amazing. Um, but they go really deep. It's kind of be, seems like it's become like a little bit of a media company next to the venture firm. Um, again, I, I don't have a close relationship there, but they, I never miss that show. That's, it's really, really, really well done. Then uh, moving around a little out of crypto, um, there's Moments of Zen, which is a, a kind of a new show. Uh, I don't know those guys either, but um, the, it, they do a really good job. It's usually like long form debate. Uh, Eric Tornberg, I think, is the kind of the MC there. Um, Logan Bartlett, who is a uh, uh, a VC at Redpoint, I believe, has just become a, a phenomenal interviewer, and his content is is fantastic. Um, Great debates, great goes deep with with really uh, interesting people. Then switching away from tech, uh, Dana Carvey, David Spade have something called Fly on the Wall, which is just like them, probably drunk. I, it seems like they're drunk. I don't know, but they're just telling stories about SNL, and I love SNL. Um, then there's the Making Sense podcast, which I'm sure most of you guys listen to. Sam Harris, he's just an incredible guy. His voice is so soothing, and he speaks so you know in depth on you know topics that we usually don't think about every day and you know kind of really like makes you a little introspective and you know question maybe why you're doing what you do it certainly does for me uh and and makes you think about things that you wouldn't otherwise think about um then there's the of course the all in podcast uh, i think that's like the most popular po- podcast in the world now uh with uh four uh, really interesting guys here in Silicon Valley, and uh, I, my favorite is you know David Sachs and Chamath, uh, you know debating stuff. And they're all four of those guys are great. Um, I learned so much from that. They're somehow controversial sometimes, but who cares? They're they're it's it's such a wealth of information watching them every week. Um, and then uh, Tim Ferriss, you know a classic. Uh, I get all my book recommendations from there. Uh, you'll see later when I get to Audible. So um, and then and then longer form stuff like really, really longer form um, that I might not hit every week. Um, The Acquired Podcast. Um, These guys are, um, they do like three or four hours on something, like everything you ever want to know about Taylor Swift or everything you want to know about Coke Industries. Or I might be making that last one up. I don't know if they've done Coke Industries yet. But they they do really like very in-depth stuff. And it's like extremely well-researched. Uh, and they're just incredibly thorough and entertaining and wonderful storytellers and both just wonderful guys. Uh, caveat, they're, they're, they have a fund that's invested in brain trust. That's not why I'm mentioning them. They're legit, legitimately great content. I'm also an LP in that fund, actually. Uh, and then um, Real Vision, which is a channel that talks about uh, global macro trends. And uh, they predict so many things accurately and uh I'm, I'm sort of a global macro novice it's just like a spectator sport for me but um they always have a great take on things and uh just a wonderful team over there i really really love that content um and then pivot um kara swisher and uh prof g they do a great job they have great guests uh if you ever want to know what the far left is thinking you can peek over there and, and find out but like even not political stuff. Like they're 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 they go really deep and and Kara is the best of the best, obviously, because very critical thinking. So um I spend, you know, most of my time in podcasts. Now I'll switch over to news. So, you know, I won't talk about news outlets or whatever. Like everybody has their own news outlets, but but the way I have found the way the best way to consume news is through the Google native mobile app. So just Google, just go to App Store and type Google, right? And it's confusing like is this just like a search engine it it, it's not it is that but but what google does is if you're using chrome it like ties everything together and like violates the hell out of your privacy and knows 
what you're going to want to read, knows what you are reading, knows what you did on your browser that day. It's just a total invasion of privacy, but fucking worth it. And um, they will, they have a feed um, that is far more useful than Twitter uh, that, that just shows stories and um, they know what you, you know, what you like. And then they'll throw in like oddball stuff that they're just saying, hey, maybe, maybe you like this, right? And like, I have found like, you know, Byzantine kind of you know, crypto white papers, scientific talks, stuff from the wine industry. Um, it just knows everything about you, right? So it's going to serve really great content. Um, like sometimes it'll be like a, a, some crazy new car that they think I want to know about and I and I do want to know and I, I should not buy. But um, anyway, I spent a lot of time in there and the more you use it, the better it gets, of course, because they are, uh, the you know, the inventors of reinforcement learning uh, and local news. I I love, I love, love, love local news. I live in the Bay Area in the North Bay. And, um, you know, what I love about local news is like, they're not lying to you, right? Like they, they're they like corporate media, kind of. I don't really make any money, but they're just telling you like what's going to happen with the weather or with building zones or with crime in your area or some local politician. Like they're, they're not lying to you like the networks are. And um, I love local news in this, in this Google app. Like, and even when I'm in New York, like I don't live there, but I spend a lot of time there. It'll like surface New York local news when I'm there, which is delightful. Um, moving on uh, to books. Um, so Audible, amazing app. I'm sure everybody uses it. The thing with me is like, I don't like sitting down and reading books and I really don't like exercising. But if I put audiobooks together with exercising, it becomes magic for me. And I actually will average around seven or eight miles a day, depending on where I am. Uh, here, I'll prove it to you with my Apple Health screenshot. But um, anyway, Audible is awesome. I'll, I'll buzz through like, I have a lot of books here. I don't read all of them. Sometimes I return them. There's a sneaky little trick where you can return a book to Audible and they'll just give you the credit back. Um, you can't do it too many times, but <clears throat> worth a shot. The one I'm in right now is called Sum by David Eagleman. It's Tales from the Afterlives. This is a beautiful, it's like a poetry book. It's a collection of stories read by kind of notable people like Emily Blunt and whatever. It's about it in their short stories about like what what is the afterlife? What and 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 so you you kind of get through all these stories and it makes you think about like how am I spending my time now and if I knew what the afterlife was, how would I live my current life differently? And it's like a million different takes on that. It's really it's it's so soothing and and poetic. Uh Plunder, which is a book about how awful private equity is. It's probably mostly right, but so, so, so biased. Uh, let me see what some of these other ones. Some of these I haven't started yet. The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. Uh, I'm I'm sure you've seen him, you know, he did a big press tour around this book. He's a famous music producer, you know, Jay-Z and all these other guys. Um, the total Zen master guy. Um, I have the hard copy and the audiobook of this. Listen to the audiobook. It, he reads it and he has just incredible voice. I uh, heard him on on Tim Ferriss, of course. Um, really worth a listen. Um moving on, lost lost connections. This one, some of these show that I'm not I haven't downloaded it because it's from a different phone or something, but lost connections is about like what what causes depression, why we're depressed, why SSRIs don't work. I've I've struggled with depression my whole life. And this is uh this book shines a different light on you know on where it comes from and what causes it, what and how to deal with it and all that kind of stuff. And shit's all over big pharma, which is great. Um End of the World is just the beginning. This is Zahan's most recent book, uh follow-up from Accidental Superpower. If you want a great global macro perspective on what the next 50 years looks like, read this. Zahan's a genius. Uh, the opposite of Zahan is you can scroll down. Uh, maybe it's not on here, is um Ray Dalio's Principles, where he talks about how America's fucked and everything is all China going forward. And Dalio somehow ignores the fact that Chinese de the Chinese demographics are dropping off a cliff. Um, it's amazing to read two books. I, I read them at the same time and they basically argued the op opposite scenarios. Uh, I found it so fascinating. I think Zahan's right, although Dalio's richer. Uh, what are the other? Amp It Up, 
Frank Slootman, founder of Snowflake, one of the most epic CEOs, operators in the world. If you want to read a book, if you're a CEO and read a book written by a guy who makes you look like you're not even fucking playing this game, read Amp It Up. <laughs> Definitely will up your game as an operator. Uh, what else? Man Who Owns the News this is like the latest about Murdoch. I'm not like ideally ideologically aligned with Murdoch, but you you know obviously have to respect you know one of the most incredible uh, media people ever, um, and they even made a show Succession about him. Really good book. Uh, and then finally, I just save this one for the end. Um, Jim Carrey uh, memoirs and misinformation. This one's a couple of years old. Uh, again, like I have, I have the hard copy and the in the audio. Jeff Bridges reads the audio, and if you don't know, like. Jim Carrey and Jeff Bridges were in Dumb and Dumber. It's a show like if you're 40, like me, you're you remember this movie when you were a teenager. Um, Jeff Bridges reads it. It and it's it starts off memoir. It starts off true, like Jim Carrey's actual life. It's just super inspiring, obviously. And then it devolves into this insane uh utopia or uh dystopian fantasy. <laughs> and um it is so beautiful and sad and then crazy at the end um i've listened to it twice it's it's really it's my favorite audiobook okay moving on uh there's another one so you know you have like longer form essays in you know the atlantic or the new yorker these fucking things are so long and they're it's such a waste of time if you were to sit and read them but if you listen to them at 1.5 you may actually get something out of it so that's the only way i can consume those publications and it was it used to be called autumn AUDM and now now it's called New York Times audio so it's like 10 bucks a year or something it's it's really worthwhile uh, they have like 20 publications on there uh, and you'll you'll save yourself from having to sit through and page through it uh, and then you know saving the best for last year is YouTube YouTube is like my cutting edge source of information and and my vice all wrapped into one so um, I'll just like brush through the subscriptions here by the way just pay for youtube premium it's like six dollars or something and you don't have to watch any of the fucking ads um i'll say bloomberg of all the like traditional media brands bloomberg is hands dead they're just lights out amazing they stream all their conferences i just watched the new york bloomberg invest conference uh for live for free last week and got to see you know drucker miller and all these global macro guys uh talk about where the economy is going incredibly valuable um 60 minutes uh, that's kind of shit um uh cnbc does an incredible job too like for for, for network media kind of pivoting into telling the truth instead of barfing out lies they've been incredible uh yahoo finance is really cool they're like long tail right like the i've been on there like 25 times so you, obviously they must be long tail right because who cares what i'm doing but um all in i've talked about club random is bill maher's podcast uh, he has a show on HBO. Obviously, that's really good. But, you know, the writers are on strike and blah, blah, blah. So he just like gets drunk and high in his basement and talks to celebrities and musicians. And it's really, really good. Even if you don't like Bill Maher, it's, it's I love him, but it's a great show. Same with Tim Dillon. Tim Dillon's like a uh, famous, I guess, I don't know, like podcaster, comedian. He's incredible. Uh, he's like a YouTube sensation. A lot of people don't know about him, but um uh, really, really funny. Uh, switching gears, breaking points is kind of, this is like, I stopped watching network news and then switched to breaking points. Uh, Crystal and Sagar, um, they're, you know, younger folks, it, the show's really long. It's 90 minutes, but you can kind of skip through it, but it's like not corporate media. It's not sponsored. They're not lying to you. Then when they have a bias, they'll tell you it, it's how I get kind of my mainstream news. You gotta, you gotta kind of skip through it, but, um, they're both fantastic. It's a great show. And it's like a hundred bucks a year or something to subscribe. Um, Lex Friedman, I'm sure you guys know. I mean, he's like our generation's Charlie Rose. He's he's just phenomenal, unbelievable, high quality content there. Uh, and then finally, I want to end with um a weird uh like guilty pleasure kind of thing. Like my co-founder Gabe always makes fun of me about this, but like when I'm under a lot of stress and I just need to like chill out at night and you know. Xanax isn't on the menu, then I'm going to, uh, I watch these air traffic control videos where uh, it's actually the real audio. So all the air traffic control is uh, recorded, right? And published. And so there's these channels that will 
take the take the audio and then overlay sort of flight maps and and whatever airport maps and there's way more than you would think near misses at airports us airports and so they will reenact these you, you know 787 almost hits a triple seven on the runway whatever near miss at jfk and now you you know how this ends right none of them actually occur as crashes right because we we would have hear, heard about it and those almost never happen but to hear the pilots and the controllers go back and forth in a very calm manner when it's really really time sensitive right maybe 30 seconds or 20 seconds until there's a collision that kills a thousand people these guys are the best of the best of operating under pressure and i sometimes think my job has a lot of pressure and it does but nothing compared to a controller at jfk trying to you know make sure a 787 doesn't you know slam into something else um and and it's a real lesson of like context and um and keeping cool under pressure uh, i'm so inspired by those guys and for some reason just listening to that for hours at night calms me down i don't know why anyway um not on the list you know all the network news cable news abc nbc cbs all just bullshit corporate fake news crap it's just all like every year more and more th those guys get exposed for just being not just biased just straight out lying so here's the future of media right amazing anyway thanks for tuning in uh i hope you found this valuable if you did like subscribe share with your friends see you in a week or two or whatever thanks